Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to The Real Deal, your source for spoiler-free movie reviews. I'm Nathaniel Ahart. I'm Alex Kent. And I'm Jacob Towell. So, this week, for our featured review, we will be talking about Terminator, Dark Fate. But, before we get to that, I think it would be good to, to talk about some new movies that we won't be reviewing on the show as well. So, guys, did you see anything good last week? Uh, yeah. This week, uh, streaming on Netflix, I saw The King, starring Timothy Chalamet. 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 Joel Edgerton and Robert Pattinson. The film follows the true story of King Henry V and in his encounters of the war and treachery at the end of the Hundred Years' War in the 15th century. Uh, Timothy exceeds expectations as an empathetic and intelligent king who opposites an incredible and hilarious performance by Robert Pattinson as the French Prince Dauphin. The King delivers as an intense medieval war film that fans of the genre are sure to be entertained by. I personally enjoyed the film's ba uh, final battle sequence, which shows the horror and intensity of medieval warfare in a chaotic way that other films of the genre really just don't do. Well, you know, I was skeptical about watching this movie because I heard some people say, okay, it, it was fine, and yeah. I heard other people say it was great, and then you said it was great, and I was like, well, yeah. I really think I should check this out now. I think the reason why people really said it was fine, it's just a very uh, melancholy, like, has feel to the entire mm -hmm. movie. Like, there's no real, like, very climactic parks where like the real hero wins. It's a very like true yeah. down to earth and story. One thing I want to add, even though Game of Thrones is a television show, it still yeah. felt like a movie at the time oh, because yeah. of the HBO budget. Would you say it's similar to that in terms of even though it's a game and everyone's playing, there's no real true winners even though like all the treachery oh, is for sure. goes on. Yeah, there's no real true winners in this uh, film. Uh, even though there are clear there's clear lines between good and bad, um, those lines start to get a little blurred near the end. Um, there's clearly things happening behind the scenes, strings being pulled from Tim, uh, of Timothy's character that are bringing him a yeah. certain way. Even though he doesn't know it, he's trying to do all the good, like the best he could do. But in the end, it doesn't yeah. really I gotta check this way. out. I love yeah. Game of yeah, Thrones and Braveheart yeah. as well. So. Well, mm -hmm. I happened to see a really great movie last week. And it was a hit at the Sundance Film Festival, but when it came out, it kind of like went under the radar. But after hearing about the cast, I knew I had to check it out because the cast is phenomenal and it's one of the best ensembles of, from any film this year, from the likes of Tim Roth and Naomi Watts to Kelvin Harrison Jr. and Octavia Spencer, who I think have given the best performance I've ever seen from them. However, Loose is also a complicated thriller about race, class, and image, handled with much nuance and depth, and one that left me on the edge of my seat the whole time. And the great thing you just said is that it's nuanced and not straightforward with it, mm -hmm. is I love movies like that because you don't want to be so on the nose. And I mean, you love Green Book. I'm not going to go I, into I that. I do that love was, Green Book. That was one of those polarizing <laughs> films, but some of my favorites are Do the Right Thing, Fruitvale Station, directed by Ryan mm -hmm. Coogler with Michael B. Jordan. So I got to see this movie. I also love Naomi Watts and um, Octavia Spencer. Every role Octa Octavia is in is just perfect, even if the movie isn't so. So I really got to check this out somewhere. Well, that's the thing, you know, and I will say about Green Book, it isn't really the best picture about race you know it can, can it's just it's good for what it is it's amazing for what it is but the thing is with this movie when you hear a race movie you don't really think thriller you think more uh, yeah. drama yeah but man it's so intense and Calvin Harrison jr. he was in like it comes at night and mm -hmm. I think in, in Mudbound, and he's gonna be in the new waves movie directed by Trey Edward Schultz um, and it, it, it's just really great, and Octavia Spencer, one of the most reliable actresses. Yeah. You said it was on Amazon movie. Prime, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, if you want to check it out, yeah, five ninety nine to rent and twelve ninety nine to buy. It. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, my film, after hearing a great amount about Bong Joon Ho's Parasite, I decided to finally check it out over the weekend. And needless to say, this film delivers in every aspect I was hoping for: smooth cinematography, great A performances, and subtle messages that fit the current state of society perfectly. And it's always risky to shift your tonal atmosphere mid-film, that's just a fact, but the filmmakers here were all on the same page with it. It deservedly won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Festival this year, being the first Korean picture to receive this honor. And it's at the end of the day, it's something worth seeing, even if not every scene is easy to absorb. Now, I'm really glad you watched this, because I happened to see this early before the show even started, and I am really bummed I didn't put it on my top five, because it, the more I think about it, the more I love it. Because it's, it's really interesting because you get this interesting dichotomy between the, this you know, lower class family and this upper class family and your perspective shifts throughout the entire movie just as the tone does in the film. It, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. The whole point of this film is showing how class works and how we all want to be at the top of the food chain. Whatever that means to you, everyone wants to be number one in their respective regard. So seeing this movie start off as a black comedy about different people, different families and classes, and then turn into just pure madness, it, I can't go into more because it's a big spoiler, that's the whole yeah. point of the film. 
film. But the madness that it turns into for the final 45 minutes is something that I haven't seen in many years. I, I would say it's one of its own, one of a kind. Yeah, and a lot of people are saying this could win Best Picture. Uh, Nathaniel, you said you were going to put, you would put this in your top five. Where would you put it in your top five? I don't want to this close, but since, <laughs> okay, it, was, it would be at five. It should have been at five. Okay. But anyway, when we come back, we will be discussing our top picks from Hollywood's biggest moneymaker, and not the one involved in Marvel Studios. Mm -hmm. That's right, James Cameron, don't move a muscle. Welcome back to The Real Deal, your source of spoiler-free movie reviews. Now, since James Cameron is once again involved in the Terminator franchise, it feels fitting to talk about what the legendary director has given us in the past. And I think each of us has seen enough of his films, you know, to have a solid opinion on some of his best works. Yeah. But, however, I think we can all agree on what his best film is. Yeah, it's very... Let's say it. Yeah. It's Terminator, Terminator 2, 2, Judgment Day. <laughs> No. Yeah, easily, and many reasons why I think I should start off. So when thinking about the film, I mean Terminator 2, it encompasses everything an action movie should be. It stands out among his catalog, in my opinion, and following the 1984 original that was more like a horror film, T2 fully dives into the action-adventure tale that it was striving for. Featuring the legendary Arnold as the T-800, Linda Hamilton as a battle-hardened Sarah Connor, and Edward Furlong as the charismatic John Connor, uh, Furlong, to me, excels as a teenage future savior of humanity, and Robert Patrick as the T-1000, the villain of the film, still frightens me with his cold stone, stone cold expression of death displayed throughout his hunt. And even though the Terminator series has become convoluted, which we'll get into later over time, Judgment Day remains an all-time classic. Yeah, I agree. You know, for a long time I heard utterances of the quality of Terminator 2, but I wasn't, I, I didn't really know what it was until I watched it last year and I truly understood what the fuss is about. With a stellar combination of visual effects, and it still looked better than most films today. Uh, stupendous action, wonderful character work, especially with Sarah Connor being perhaps the greatest female protagonist in any film, and a relentless villain. T2 stands up to this day as one of the greatest films in the action and sci-fi genres. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love Terminator 2, but with different reason. Uh, my favorite parts of the film come from the characters themselves, rather than the timeless action sequences and special effects. The dynamic between a young John Connor and the Terminator is what I believe makes this film so great. Uh, John trying to teach the Terminator how to act in the real world between them running from the frightening T-1000. Uh, it's the dynamic that elevates each action sequence and intention because we've seen the innocence of these two characters and actually care for them. Uh, the same goes for Sarah Connor, whose position at the asylum at the beginning as an innocent and totally sane person is a realistic fit considering uh, the events of the first film. And yeah, and I absolutely love her character arc because yeah. in the first film she was just the scared girl and she was trying to figure everything out, and in this one she's a complete yeah, badass. She was she yep. was the final girl basically in Terminator One, and the second one, the first time you see her, she has muscles, and even so, she's a bit insane in the asylum, as you were saying. But oh, she yeah, had every yeah. reason to be so, and yeah. you see the evolution of the bond between the three of them: John Connor, Sarah Connor, mother and uh, son, and mm -hmm. then the Terminator, who's the protector, a father figure. So I mm -hmm. really love the movie. The action sequences still hold up with practical effects. I mean, yeah. everything about it is just timeless. Yeah, even I mean, even the effects with the T1000, mm -hmm. it's I incredible. Say, yeah. And as you all said, he is. Uh, he's absolutely frightening. Yeah, yeah, the way he's played, just I, I think what comes to mind is that parking gar garage scene right after the mall when they're getting out of there, and he's mm. just sprinting with these big like knives as arms. It's just the so steel. scary to yeah. me. No, he is Robert Patrick was the I think he was the best villain in the series. No, yeah. I, he's one of the best villains of all time. And so you know, considering that we all chose Terminator Two. Uh, you know, he's, he's made a lot of other films that we must talk about. I mean, two of them are one, second and third, respectively, in terms of the highest grossing yeah. films of all time, yeah. um, which I think we all have varying opinions on. Yeah, um, definitely. We've talked about this already, but yeah. I mean, it, we're talking about Titanic, as we know here, um, and I think it's, it's a great movie. It's a good love story. I think it's good. It's a, it's, you think it's what? I think it's good. You think it's good. It's I, good, but it's. I think it's one of the most overhyped movies of probably all you. time, right along uh, with Avatar as the two top mm. grossing I mean, movies you're, you're of all time. You're saying Titanic and Avatar. I mean, both of you use the word overhyped and overrated. Yes, overhyped yes. and when overrated. When they came out at the time in the late, well, Avatar was 2009, again, sure. Titanic was the late 90s, 97. 97, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think people, when they saw that, my dad, who's a big film fan, but he wouldn't go to the theaters more than once. He saw Titanic four times in theaters, wow, so that's really? saying something. He was willing to spend, I guess, 12 hours of his life in the theater for Titanic. To me, Titanic 
is great. Uh, I do agree it drags on at times mm -hmm. with the whole love story between Jack and Rose. Yeah. And the whole, I yeah. mean, it's been so many years. I can The, the ending yeah. is still disappointing right. with the whole wooden plank, the door. Oh, whatever. my God. But the they wrecking of the ship. could have both fit on that plank just, just to put there. it out we there. Know. We know. <laughs> ben, but the wrecking of the ship is by no, far the best No, to me, this, yeah. this might be a little yeah. morbid to say, and I, I'm just going to say it. To me, the best part of the film is definitely the last hour when the ship's yeah. sinking yep. because of the practical effects they used. Literally, in real freezing water, they did all of this. Mm. I guess when you're looking at this film, um, I guess what I think is, if it wasn't on the Titanic, <laughs> would it still be a good movie? Yeah. You know? Yeah, you see, and it would just, I think it would, well, it would just be it. kind of, yeah, I know that's the point of it, but still. <laughs> I feel like they just kind of threw in. I, I, I would have. I think I would have liked to see more like mm. historical yeah. facts about also, it, other than oh, one more thing. I just it. want to throw in there. We didn't mention Aliens. Aliens is one yeah. of the best sequels yeah. of all time. I just tried to start watching it last night, and I just couldn't get through it, unfortunately, because I was. You'll, tired. you'll be in for a ride. I mean, it's not one of my favorite films of all time, mm -hmm. but I respect it what it stands for in the action genre because the first one, directed by Ridley Scott, is more of your science fiction horror film. James Cameron realized he couldn't beat that and just went, "Let's just show Marines killing aliens, and let's just show another female protagonist with Ripley." So Gordon Weaver, yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah. Best actress nomination for a science fiction movie. Yeah, unheard aliens. of. Well, after the break, opinions will be sounded and hot takes will be served. Oh yes. And our review of Terminator: Dark Fate will be back. Well, folks, here we are again. It's time with what I am sure you've all been waiting for, our review of Terminator Dark Fate, directed by Tim Miller, starring Mackenzie Davis, Linda, ha Linda Hamilton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Natalie Reyes, and Gabriel Luna. Now, the Terminator franchise has had some incredible highs, but also some incredible lows. However, Cameron's involvement, could this be the film that stands as a worthy sequel to Terminator 2? Well, we sent a guy out on the street to see how the legacy of Terminator has lasted. Take a look. What's going on, Real Deal? This is your assistant producer, Zachary, out in the field for once. What am I doing out here and not in the studio? Good question. Today we're asking everybody about the new Terminator movie, Terminator Dark Fate. We're going to go around Campus Center and see what some takes are from students, so pay attention. I'm sitting down here doing homework with... Jenny. Jenny. Now, Jenny, do you know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? Yes, I do. Yes, everyone knows who he is. Wasn't he like the governor? Right? He, w he was a governor. Yeah. Yeah, you mean the old governor of California? He is. He... Okay. So we got Bodybuilder for the first time today. He's in Terminator. Any other roles you might have known him from? Uh, no. Hey, are you planning on seeing the new uh, chapter, the Terminator franchise, Terminator Dark Fate? This is the first time I'm hearing about it, honestly. Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but I am now. I didn't know there was a new one coming up, but I definitely would. No. No. No, because the last time I watched a Terminator movie that had recently come out, it was horrible. And can the dog do an impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger? I had a little bit. <laughs> get to the chopper. Uh, get to the chopper. I'll be back. <clears throat> I'll be back. So, in conclusion, college students really don't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is, let alone the Terminator series, and if they do, they're not going to go see Dark Fate. Only a handful of them have been able to actually want to go see Dark Fate. But that's all I got from the street. Back to you guys. Thank you, Zach. And I don't think they need to see it because it's not good. Yeah. No, no. it's not good at all. <laughs> uh, let's talk mostly about the performances and screenplay right now. Yes. Because um, the performances can really go as far as the screenplay, which is bad. It's not so. good. It's, <laughs> well, well, I think there's, without spoiling the movie, there's one big thing that right at the beginning. kills this movie. They basically shoot themselves in the foot with the first two minutes yeah. of this film. Literally, you enter the film, you see... Uh, I'm not going to give away what it is because it's the biggest spoiler of the film. But you go and you're excited, new Terminator film, and then two minutes later the title credits appear and you're like, oh well, this is going to be a drag. And yeah. It's like, oh, you like Terminator 1 and 2? Oh! <laughs> Basically yeah. just everything it's, they ever did, it's, yeah, it didn't it, happen. It ruins the legacy. Yeah. To provide it, some context, this is the first direct sequel to Terminator 2 that we've ever gotten. Since Terminator and it Rising almost Changer. immediately ruins that uh, concept that they have to work off of. I mean, Terminator 2 is one of the best action movies of all time, and they, they don't work with that. No. Yeah, and they guess whose idea it was? James Cameron himself. James, James Cameron. Cameron. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, he, he wrote, was that, that was one of the few scenes he wrote for the film. Well, the viewers well. don't know if they haven't seen it, but it basically, we can't go on too long about it, but if you love the first two, they're going to tell you it's too bad, yeah. we're doing our own thing, mm -hmm. deal with it. So. But with the script, as you were saying, it really, it's like the action is good. You can watch it, it's a watchable movie, but the thing is, it's like the characters just aren't there. Right. Yeah. Like in Terminator 2, you understood, you know, why John and Connor would end up being mm -hmm. this this leader, you know, he was very resourceful, you know, and, and all this stuff and like Street Sarah smart. Connor. Street smart. Yeah. Street well. smart, yeah. And with this with this movie, these characters aren't very defined. And yeah, I, I really we're not didn't given time with them, I don't yeah. think. We're and not given enough time with them at all. And that's just part of the issue. I think pacing is also a huge issue you in think this movie. So? One thing? Yeah, I really do. I'm because I mean there's just so much action in this movie, it's just Context, context, dialogue. I mean, I mean, not even dialogue. Mm. What, what would you call it when they're just explaining exposition. what's going to? Yeah, exposition. exposition. One yeah. thing I would say about this film too is John Connor never felt like a da well, he was a guy, but a, da a damsel in distress. No. Um, mm. And yeah, the lead in this film is literally just thrown into the situation. You don't understand why she's being hunted. It's just it's right. happening. It's just and happening. It is. And that's the thing. Like Mackenzie Davis, even though I wouldn't say her character is the most fleshed out, she was good for what she, she was did. Good, yeah. And Linda Hamilton is always a standout. Yeah. Though I don't like definitely her a saving grace. I don't like her saying. The I'll be back line that's just very in your face fan service. And mm -hmm. Arnold was really funny, actually. No, he has a great What he was given, yes, it was really funny. I was funny, like, wow, honestly. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I mean, I don't really understand why this movie had to be made. Um, no. It's just, just for money, but for then money. again, it's bombing. I mean, it's this bombing. is the third failed trilogy, re soft reboot. They've tried to make three trilogies off of three soft reboots. All three have failed, including this one. I mean, I don't know where they could go from here. I, I think you just gotta, as you, you wanted to say something before, what do they have to do to the <sighs> franchise? They have to terminate this franchise, guys. They've, it's gotta be terminated. But to terminate I'm gonna it. say one of the reasons, final thoughts, of why people aren't going to see this movie. Internet culture has really affected YouTubers, social media stars are telling people don't go see this movie because yeah. of this plot wow. point. That, yes, Last yes. Jedi, Star Wars, yeah. same thing. That same is thing. true. Very well, Force Awakens. <laughs> we'll be back with our final thoughts shortly. Welcome back to our review of Terminator Dark Fate. Now, before the break, we asked you who was the studios had in mind to originally play the Terminator. The answer is O.J. Simpson. Uh, Cameron turned him down, however, due to the fact that he did not believe Simpson would be convincing as a killer. That's so, so ironic. Wow. Well, anyway, uh, Terminator 2. Um, I feel like this movie... Dark Fate, you mean? Dark, Dark Fate. Fate. Yeah, Dark Fate. Yeah. I feel like... It well, also Terminator 2 is the same movie. Yeah, it's, it's the same like, thing. That's why like you said it. It's like The Force Awakens, except it doesn't have good characters. Right. I mean, it yeah. doesn't develop these characters at no. all. It doesn't give us enough time with them for us to actually care during the action sequences, which is something Terminator 2 did very well, and that's my favorite part of the entire movie. Absolutely. You know? that, I think that's why it stands out. Another, besides the one action. more thing, Tim Miller, the director of this, did Deadpool. The difference between yeah. Deadpool and this is Deadpool isn't trying to take itself too seriously, and you know what you're getting into. Terminator was well established with two great films in the 80s and 90s, so. Yeah, I don't know. I just think they, they tried too hard to do something that already worked in the past. Funny, because the writers of the last movie, Zombieland, wrote Deadpool, and he directed right. it. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, you know, as a fan of strictly the first two Terminator movies, Terminator Dark Fate feels like just such a betrayal to what those films and what their characters stood for. On top of that, the new characters are bland and two-dimensional. Although the film itself is very watchable, just please end this franchise. Terminate it. Does, it. it does, terminate this franchise. Yeah, it does be... not deserve any more of this treatment. I give it four and a half out yeah, of ten. I gotta agree with you on that yeah. one. So I'm gonna start actually my personal opinion uh, as defining the word fate. And fate is the development of events beyond a person's control, usually determined by a supernatural power. And in this case, the writers of Terminator Dark Fate had the ap ability to improve the stigma of the recent films in the franchise. Instead, they lazily penned a script that lacked the depth from the originals. And to put it best, this movie is a summer blockbuster released at the end of fall. And as the band Simple Minds sang in the 80s, don't you forget about me? Sadly, I will. Five out of 10. I gotta agree with both of you guys. Terminator Dark Fate is the third failed start to what would have been a new Terminator trilogy that totally disgraces the best film of the franchise while literally copy and pasting its entire formula and storyline. Linda, Ham Linda Hamilton's performance is the only saving grace of this film, as other returning characters like Arnold's Terminator, aka Carl, is written into oblivion. James Cameron's return to the franchise fails to honor the characters that made the Terminator franchise so memorable and falls flat on its CGI face. Dark Fate feels like a mindless action film that probably would have fared better as a summer release. 
Somehow I enjoy Terminator Salvation more. My final score is 4 out of 10. Terminator. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You heard I'm, it from the real deal. You, you heard it right here. Fun. Don't give it money. Uh, so next time we will be reviewing the much anticipated studio racing film, Ford v Ferrari. Now, how excited are you guys for this film? Because I can tell you I certainly am. I'm excited for the performances that this film is going to bring. I think Matt Damon and Christian Bale, they're always good picks. Um, I don't know much about the history of this race, mm -hmm. so I'm actually excited to see what happens at the end. Add, Please don't I, spoil no, it No, no, I have to add two things. <laughs> I accidentally went on uh, Wikipedia the other day to uh, look at their characters in, re in reality. So I know the spoiler is just because it's real life. Do not do it if you want to see the movie. Mm -hmm. Another thing is, too, the original leads were supposed to be uh, Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. So either way, wow. we were going to get stars. So. But Bale, I think, is just that's Miles so, above. such yeah. a great I mean, actor. I could, go, I could go without another scene of Tom Cruise riding a motorcycle in real life. I'm I mean, I don't yeah, need more yeah, of it. Yeah. I think I'm okay. I think these He's are great. the right picks. <laughs> um, but who, I think um, John Berthenol is also Berthold in it. He's in it for a little The funny bit. thing about him, and we can go on about, about the movie in a second, every movie John Berthenol has been on recently, He's just died in flashbacks. It's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> but really? I don't think this is going to happen. No, this time. no, this time I, really I don't think, think it's going to happen. It looks like happen. he's actually uh, he's live gonna live in this through the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I do you guys think this is going to be a big Oscar contender? Because I certainly do, from what I've been hearing about it. Um, I think just with what you have, even from the trailer, it looks like the story is very appeasable. It's historic context. You got two A-list stars and just a story that needs to be told. That's the best thing when you historic events are overlooked and then film brings it to the forefront. I think. Definitely, if it's good, we haven't seen it yet. I think it easily can be. But Absolutely. with these movies, there's always a chance that it falls on its face. Yeah, um, I agree. It's Perhaps, happened a yeah. bunch of times before. You got A-list stars on one movie. Uh, it's historic. It's all. It's 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 just like it could go bad. Well, <laughs> also, but, but <laughs> the trailers haven't really given me anything to work off of. I mean, I haven't. I'm not like I'm not really even excited uh -huh. about the movie. I'm just ready to see it and see if it's good. Um, I don't know if that's just bad trailers or I don't know. Well, also keep in mind that it's directed by James Mangold, who directed mm -hmm. Logan and all their films like Walk the Line, but I haven't seen that yet. And so, first off, you know he's great with actors. Yeah. Second off, you know he can write a good script. I mean, he was nominated. It's, Logan's the only comic book movie to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Adaptation. Which I loved. Yeah. I love Logan. It's, and yeah, it's one of the best comic yeah. book I mean, movies. The, the in thing recent, is, too, memory. Ford v. Ferrari, um, there's not a lot of great racing films all the time. I mean, I'm just gonna say a guilty pleasure of mine is Ricky Bobby, Talladega Nights. It's not uh, a great film. I was film. about to say Talladega Nights. Yeah, yeah, Nights like there's as well. that. Yeah. There's the Herbie films from Cars? Like the 60s. Herbie. <laughs> Cars, yeah, Pixar. But like, we haven't gotten a great racing film. There was that Ron Howard one from a few years back with uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth. I forget the Hold name on, of it. Hold on, guys. You're, you're forgetting about 2007 Speed Racer live oh, action. Oh, I've, I've heard that nice movie. About I love that movie. Yeah? I love that. It's honestly from one of the most faithful like adaptions of like. What was the a magna? Is that what? I think yeah, so. Manga, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Another, it's great. I it's actually really Another good. racing scene that comes to mind is a uh, Phantom Menace with a uh, young Anakin. Now but, this is pod racing. <laughs> but yeah, like that's what I'm saying. If we get a great racing movie towards Oscar season, I think this would be a really nice opportunity to expand the genre. I guess. Yeah, I agree. Well, once again, guys, thanks for tuning into the Real Deal. Uh, we may be doing a webisode on a beloved franchise very soon. Looking so to follow our Twitter at. The Real Deal, WTOP, to stay updated. As always, have a good night, folks, and keep it real.